Welcome to Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals. It's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear back again here in the old Den of Tools. And today we're going to do kind of a, a primer, if you will, on the difference between all the different brands over at Harbor Freight. They talk about their good, better, best kind of thing. But what does that really mean? Which brand is which? Which is the good? Which is the better? Which is the best? Which is the one to avoid? And what's the one you want to take home? So we're going to talk about a few of the items. We can't go through every brand they have because they've got thousands of items. But we're going to cover the top tier, if you would, the ones that most people ask questions about. So the first thing we're going to talk about is in handheld power tools. All right, the good. This is this is the baby bear of the of the bunch, if you will is the Warrior line. Now, there's not a whole lot to it, uh, but they've got an 18-volt uh, lithium uh, drill driver. Now, remember, 18, 20 volts, the same thing, but you can see here that they call the base one at 18-volt, whereas the upper-level ones are referred to as 20 volts. Even though they're the same thing, it's a marketing thing to make them sound better, I guess. Uh, you can blame DeWalt for that one. They started that whole fiasco. Anyway, the uh, they have the 12 volt also. We have a couple four volt tools as well and some miscellaneous stuff, but that's your basic entry level. Now, I've been told that there's going to be a lot more to see in the Warrior brand coming up. Uh, I've heard several different tools are going to be coming out, so they're going to be expanding that, that lineup, and I'm excited to see what they come out with. Now, the better brand here is going to be Bauer. This is the middle of the road. This is the Goldilocks zone. And you know us bears, we we love that Goldilocks. <laughs> anyway, the whole point here is this is your 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 weekend warrior DIYer to prosumer level. Uh, that's what they're targeted as. And you may have your own opinions on everything, but I'm talking about who they're aiming this at and where it falls in, you know, in relationship to the other tools they have there at the old freights. So you've got, you know, everything, they've got a huge lineup of Bauer. If you haven't been following Bauer, you've been missing out. I mean, we got everything up to cordless heat guns, I mean, blower, shop blowers, saws, leaf blowers. They have outdoor power equipment. They have a decent little radio, a nice little grinder, all sorts of stuff. Different battery sizes now. We're, we're seeing the larger batteries. We got the 5 amp hour. Supposedly, we got the 8 amp uh, battery coming out later this year. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff coming on. So, uh you know, that's your middle of the road. That's the one, like, if you're like the homeowner, you know, big time DIYer type, this is what you want, okay? This is what you're looking for. Now, they've they've got their, what they call their professional level at Hercules. Now, there's not really much in the way of truly high-end, like, brushless kind of stuff like you're going to see from the upper ends of Milwaukee or Makita or DeWalt or some of the others. But, you know, they've been kind of pushed back. The whole COVID thing caught them flat-footed. Also, I'll be honest, the Bauer thing, it took off so hot. It just took over all their production, and all the Hercules got stuff got pushed back. Will they come out with more of it? Probably, but it's taken some time. You've, if you've been around the channel, you've seen some of the tools we've talked about. But they have an excellent uh, selection of basic, you know, higher grade kind of tools. These are really well made. They're solid. Uh, you know, you get a nice metal Jacobs chuck. Uh, you got the hammer drill. You got the impact. You got a great uh, resip, a, a very nice circ saw. The, the grinder, which is now a brushless grinder. We see the brushless multi-tools coming out soon. We got a couple shop vacs already for it. They're, I mean, if you look at it, just a few months ago, this was half this amount of tools. So they're trying. They're making the effort. All right. So that's your good, better, best in, in handheld power tools. That's going to be the Warrior. That's going to be the Bauer. And then at the top, you're going to see the Hercules. All right. Miter Saws gets a little weird here, okay? Chicago Electric was the brand they had for the longest time. And as you can see, there's no 12-inch sliding saw. This was the one they kind of made their bones with. They 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 got started in the whole miter saw thing by owning that budget miter saw market. It's what got me into Harbor Freight, I'll be honest, years and years ago, was the Chicago Electric 12-inch uh, sliding miter saw. And it's gone. It's just gone. And I honestly think that the Chicago Electric brand in miter saws is going to go away. It may go away across the board. We can talk about that later. But right now what you got is you got a 10-inch slider and a 10-inch, you know, standard bevel compound miter saw. Uh, and, of course, the, the mobile stand to go with it. Now, in the middle of the road, you've got Admiral. And this is an odd one. All right. I talked to the guys and gals over at Harbor Freight and asked them, 
what the ferret is this thing doing here? Because it doesn't match up with anything else. There's just this one tool. And it what it turns out is they were ramping up. They knew they wanted to get a middle of the road saw out. And this was just kind of their first shot at it. It it apparently landed pretty good. It's a saw that a lot of you like. I like it. It's a great entry-level saw. And in fact, it got to the point where I was recommending this over the Chicago Electric 12-inch sliding miter saw. So this is pretty much now the entry-level 12-inch slider. Not sure where the rest of the brand's going to go. If there's going to be more Admiral, not sure. All right, then what's going to be the really kind of because we got a double Goldilocks zone here, is now we have Bauer again in the middle here. We've got the new 10-inch uh, dual bevel sliding compound miter saw and the new 12-inch single bevel compound miter saw, both around the $200 price point. There's going to be more coming out on this. We've seen a cordless one's going to come out. Don't know if there's going to be a 12-inch on this. The cordless, of course, is going to be, I, I'm pretty sure it's like a seven and a quarter or whatever. Uh, so it's a smaller size blade, but that's pretty standard for a lot of the cordless stuff. Now, at the high end, we've got the Hercules. And you've heard the bear talk about Hercules before. This is a fantastic saw. For the money, when it's on sale, for the money, it's a great saw. The prices have gone up. The new price on it, <laughs> check this out. If you've been following it, you're going to lose your mind. I think it's like some GameStop stock or something here. Uh, <laughs> 379 or 380 that that's ridiculous, all right? It's a good saw, but it's not a $380 saw. Um, you know, okay, maybe it is, but the fact is I'm not paying that much and you shouldn't either. Usually this thing comes down close around $300 a couple times a year. And that's really what you want to aim for. The Hercules uh, stand next to it. Fantastic stand. And the blades, I gotta say, I really like the blades. They, I've tried, you know, I used to be a Diablo user and then I got into the Irwin stuff and found that to be the Irwin marples right in there with the Diablo. And I would rank this also right there with those as well. All right. Now let's talk about uh, sockets and stuff. We're going to get a little bit more into the hand tool kind of stuff. And Pittsburgh is going to be your bottom rung. It's your entry level. Now, even in Pittsburgh, there's multiple levels of quality. And that's what a lot of people can't seem to wrap their noggin around. There's some really cheap Pittsburgh stuff out there. There's some pretty decent Pittsburgh stuff out there. I'll tell you what, uh, not a fan of the color coded kind of stuff here. And, you know, some of the other stuff's not the, not the best, but like their impact sockets, I know lots of people who use their impact sockets, professionals who have it in, in their tray, you know, it, they, they do a pretty darn good job. They're one of the things that long ago, people have been telling me this, this is what you got to get. And I tried them and I got to tell you, they're about as good as anything else you're going to find you know, for the price. And uh, they're decent enough. And they got a lot of other different stuff to go along with it. They got swivels, everything else. Now, if you want to step up a notch, you're going to be looking at Quinn. Now, Quinn does not have nearly the range of, of uh, implements that you're going to see with the Pittsburgh stuff. But you're, if you're looking for nice, decent, non-skip chrome sockets, they have some, some great choices in there. And then at the top of the line, of course, is going to be Icon. And Icon's the, the big, you know, big boy. They're, that's where they're aiming at the, the tool truck kind of levels. They're aiming at, you know, squarely at Snap-on and Mac and SK and all those guys. And, you know, in some cases, they're hitting it. They're getting, I mean, I know a lot of people who tried these uh, and, you know, they had them for a year and they're like, they, they held up. They worked great. I know there were some questions. Some people said something about softer sockets at the, at the beginning when they first came out. And uh, I'm, I'm not too sure. I've been trying to get some more research into it, uh, but I have my theories as to why that is. And uh, But the fact of the matter is that over the long run, they've been out for over a year now, people like them, and you know, they have the new impact ones as well. So that's going to be your top tier. Pliers. All right, continuing on with the hand tools because now it gets a little kind of different here. Again, the, the entry level here is going to be Pittsburgh. You're going to find about everything you want in the Pittsburgh line. Well, once a strong term, okay? They're decent enough. Like these, I've had a pair of the, the channel locks. They they will work in it. You know, okay, they work-ish, all right? They, they're not absolutely terrible, but I'm not a fan of them. I you know, prefer something a little bit more finished to it. So then we got Quinn. Quinn is the Goldilocks one here. You know how Bauer was the Goldilocks in, in the power tools? Well, Quinn is your Goldilocks when it comes to the hand tools here in, in most cases. 
And uh, we got a nice set of pliers there. They go through needle nose, everything else. They even have a lot of the electrician style kind of stuff here. Uh, I got the snap ring pliers. They're decent enough uh, for not having that like dedicated one. This is the one where you had to change the little nibs on them and whatnot. And then the, there's this weird branch off for Bremen. Bremen is kind of their clamping brand. Uh, they have quick clamps and then they also have, you know, your typical vice lock ish kind of, you know, uh, clamps here and that that's all you're going to find really in the Bremen line then you've got Doyle and Doyle is their top of the line this is I'm I'm don't get offended but I'm gonna say that this is their version of like Knipex or you know other high-end pliers and stuff like that I'm not saying they're as good I'm not implying that in any way shape or form but they are pretty good they're pretty close and they're a good bit cheaper I mean look at this on sale Thirteen dollars for a nine and a half inch, you know, uh, wire clamping. Uh, sorry, wire crimping tool. Uh, I've got a good selection of the Doyle stuff. All stuff I bought myself. I think it's pretty good. I've got some Knipex stuff. It, it's definitely better. But you're looking at twice the price for Knipex or other similarly, uh, you know, similar level tools. Screwdrivers. We're going to be kind of in the same area. We got Pittsburgh here at the entry level. I will say some of these Pittsburgh tools, you know, screwdrivers, they're not bad. They're not half bad. Some of them are totally more than half bad, but some of them, I found these to be decent enough, but the, these things are, are terrible. Again, like I was saying before, there's multiple levels within the Pittsburgh line. These things run, run far away. I don't care that they're $5. They're horrible. Don't get those. But some of the other ones, not so bad. All right, now moving along though, then if you want something a little bit better, again, we got Quinn here in the Goldilocks zone. They're in the middle of the road, not as large a selection. Sadly, they are getting rid of the Quinn bottle opener. It's being replaced with a all chromed Pittsburgh bottle opener. Apparently it was not as big a sale, seller as they thought it would be. And then up uh, at the top, it gets interesting again. We've got Doyle again at the top here. And then we've got several tools. Again, in, uh, we're covering into the electrician side, insulated, as well as heavy-duty screwdrivers. Uh, they, they seem pretty nice. They're decent tools. But then uh, for the automotive side, Icon stepped in there, and they've got a set uh, of screwdrivers as well. Not a huge selection. But they got a standard eight piece, very similar, kind of a knockoff of the uh, the snap on. But we look at the price, fifty bucks. And remember, there's that twenty percent uh, coupon for uh, Icon Tools that floats around every couple months or so. You're definitely again. Remember rule number one: shopping at Harbor Freight is we don't shop without a, a coupon. All right, and let's talk air compressors. Now, this has been a huge item, a huge seller for Harbor Freight for years and years. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, even on this channel, we talked about the old uh, uh, Central Pneumatic 21 gallon, uh, that it was the old standby that everyone went with and stuff. And as you can see here, uh, she's gone. That 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 is uh, that's out of here because there's been something interesting going on. And you can see we got clearance here. We got clearance on this one. I'm guessing we're going to see a clearance on this one too. Clearance there. Now these last three compressors they have here, the Centro Pneumatic, uh, the, the black compressors, We everything, we got the 29 gallon for 370. We got a, a nine gallon wheel down there for 750 and the 30 gallon, this is the big boy that they have right now as far as commercial grade kind of uh, compressors. And, and if you may balk at that, I've seen lots of people running these on their trucks. All right. So it, they're out there. They're being used. Uh, and, you know, at 1350, that that's not a small chunk of change. Here's the weird thing. These are definitely the higher end, uh, you know, almost professional grade. In some cases, pr pros using these on a daily basis. And you would expect these to be at the top end. And here they are at the entry you know, level. Not sure what's going to go on. Not sure if they're going to be replaced. We'll have to wait and see on those. Now, as far as the middle of the road, that's the new McGraw. Uh, <laughs> I love these compressors. These, for, for DIY or home use, these things are fantastic. Now, one of the things I constantly tell people is the, the world of air compressors and air power tools is rapidly changing with, you know, cordless tools coming in and just eating their lunch left and right for the home user and the DIY and even the prosumer kind of stuff. And as such, you, you don't need an 80-gallon compressor. You don't even usually need a 30-gallon compressor. 
and th- that's where McGraw comes in. They they handle 99% of most people's air compressors needs and they do a great job of it. You know, uh, I've had on the show here, we've had the 21, uh, 20 gallon, the 21 gallon, you know, they just recently came out with the eight gallon. We got the, the pancake and the, the smaller hot dog style compressor. They good fit and finish great dials on them. Nicely made just everything you'd want in a, you know, in a, in a DIY or, you know, prosumer level compressor. And then we step up to the big boy, which is Fortress. Now, when we say big boy here, eh, it, they're aimed at the professional market or the high-end prosumer here. You've got their new 10-gallon hot dog style one there. That's a really nice one. We got the 26-gallon. That's their 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 big, they actually say their 26 and their 27 here. These are their two bigger compressors. Everything else is going to be a smaller style or a, a pancake uh, these are definitely for for nailing kind of uh, features or nailing kind of uses, I should say. And then you have these, which are kind of in the middle. Now, I've got the two-gallon one, this one right here in the middle, uh, that they sent me for testing. I fall in love with it. Uh, it's pretty much the, the only compressor I use because uh, I really, you know, I don't use a lot of air tools. And as such, for everything else I need, this does almost all of it. Now, I do still have the uh, bigger McGraw, I have a, the 21 gallon, if I need something with some high pressure to fall back on. But this that's the one I use all the time. All right. W- n- speaking of air, we're going to talk a lot about air stuff. So roofing and nailers, we're going to move this through this kind of fast. So we've got uh, the old Central Pneumatic. Now, this used to be a huge line for Harbor Freight. And as you can see, a lot of it's being clearance. There's not as much as there used to be. Uh, not sure if they're just going away or what's going to happen there but uh th- this has been their entry level now the mid-level there and th- these are a great solution is the banks nailers they have a lot better fit and finish a lot better build build construction a lot better reliability and they have uh, some great choices in nailers here everything up to a 15 degree coil roofing nailer look at that these, these things are fantastic now if you want the top of the line ones <laughs> that's pierce <laughs> I still want to be there when the guy suggested, yeah, we're going to call our nailers Pierce. But they did. And uh, these are some great nailers. I've got the pin nailer on this and uh, the Brad nailer or whatever. And it it works flawlessly. Of course, it's not very demanding when you're just shooting Brad nails, right? Um, air tools. Now, this one gets kind of weird. So we've got the, the old central pneumatic air tools. And a lot of these are terrible. I'm just going to be honest with you. They're, they're just horrible. I've tried several of them. It kind of what put me off air tools in, in a lot of ways, at least for home shop kind of use. Uh, but, you know, some of them are not half bad. Uh, some of them are not half good. But, the, you know, like the air hammer here, I've heard good things about this. But the, the reversible air drills, uh, a lot of these things are just terrible. This grinder, I've, I tried that uh, grinder there. It was horrible. You know, but, you know, they do have a lot of options here. And, you know, some of them are fairly well-reviewed. So maybe you might want to consider some of them, some of these options, especially if it's something you're going to do a one-off kind of job. I'm going to do it one or two, three times. And if it's a hassle, I can work with it a little bit because, you know, I don't want to spend the big money on something I'm only going to use once. Chief is their professional-grade air tools, all right, or at least trying to be their professional-grade air tools. I've heard good and bad things about this. I mean, even this specifically the Chief Air Hammer here. Uh, I had some people say that it was awesome. I had a fir- uh, one person say it broke the first time they used it. Good news is that all this stuff comes with at least a 90-day warranty, so you can return it. with the, you know That's what I say. Take it out, put it through its paces, make sure it's going to hold up before you, you, know, you just say, well, you know, this thing ain't going to work. Uh, or worse yet, a lot of people get it, they, they throw it on a shelf and they don't use it for six months, then they have a problem and you're out of luck. All right, but anyway, Chief, as you can see, they've rolled out quite a few tools in that line as well as some accessories. All right, now here's where it gets odd. Baxter. So Baxter is an air tool line they have that's a higher end line, but it's only Sanders. So I don't know if they're trying to do this so they can separate because like sometimes woodworkers will also use air sanders as well and they don't want it to seem like it's too much automotive. I don't know. 
What do you think about it? Why do you think they 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 carved that line out for just their Sanders? Uh, we got a six inch dual action, a six inch geared, six inch professional orbital composite. Then we've got a, an inline and a, a basically what we call a finger there, a finger sander. So I don't know. I I don't know why they they changed the you know created a special brand just for them, but they did. Now we're going to talk about some more air tools here. We're talking about the wrenches, impact wrenches, pneumatic wrenches. Uh, again, uh, I guess not all impact, but some all pneumatic. How about that? And th again, a lot of these like this. I did try this one for a lark. See what it's like. It was so bad. <laughs> but, you know, you'd be surprised to see how big a selection of air impact and ratchets they have and how big they are. We got one inch pistol grips look at this pinless air impact wrench for 239 if you gotta do some big work and the reviews on it are not bad now a lot of people say well you know they lie about the reviews and stuff no 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 this is how you read the reviews if it's not in the fifth star it, it it's terrible if it's if it's like this one it's just getting into it it's usable all right this one up here solidly into the the fifth star that's probably a pretty decent tool this thing, nah, not so much. All right, and there are some that are even lower than that. There are some really bad tools out there. But uh, again, th this is their entry level line here for this. Then we have the Earthquake, okay? Now, that, I know it said XT up there, but we're just talking about the Earthquake here. So they have an Earthquake uh, air ratchet. They have composite air impact wrenches. They have a one inch aluminum air impact wrench. They have you know a nice little selection. This is their middle of the road. The Earthquake XT is where you get to their high-end professional. You see the, they're here. This is their new, like, you know, in the shop, trenches kind of thing. Uh, all all out, half-inch composite air in, impact wrench. And then we got some of the other stuff. Now, I have, I think it's this one right here. And it's great. I don't have a compressor that can really put it to, <laughs> put it to work the way it's meant to be. Uh, but the, uh, the build construction on it is excellent. And we can see here we got the new Earthquake XT. That's the new half inch. And, you know, of course, going along with all these air tools is going to be air lines. All right. So we have several different things here. So in the basic line, we've got central pneumatic and we've got polyurethane and PVC. So different types of hoses here and, and, and rubber also, all, all within the entry level line here. I would say pretty much stay away from most of the central pneumatic stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan of getting stuff on a hose reel. So, you know, that's just me. But we got the Diablo. This is your middle of the road. These things are nice. These are nice air hoses here. Polyurethane here. Uh, we got a couple PVC. We got the rubber also. Depends on what you're going to use it for, the size it is, the internal diameter, how long the run's going to be. The uh, But they, they make some excellent hoses. Again, as I said, you know, I'm a big fan of the, the reels on these, so you might want to consider that. Keeps the shop neat. Don't have to worry about any tripping kind of, you know, issues and stuff. And then they have one earthquake that's their top of line, $150. But if you really want to go with something that, that's the top of line that they have, you have that one option. All right. And here we got cabinets. Now, cabinets are pretty easy here. We got the Yukon as the entry level. Of course, this all started with these two cabinets here. And it's expanded. Uh, we got the new colors in that. I heard we're also going to get red. I don't think we're going to get anything else beyond that right now. We'll have to wait and see. They added in the, the two-drawer service cart. That's kind of the entry-level service cart kind of thing. And then we got the garage cabinets, of course. All right. Middle of the road there is U.S. General. U.S. General, for being a middle of the road, a Goldilocks zone, they're a really good cabinet, all right? I recommend them for most people looking for cabinets. Of course, the 30-inch uh, five-drawer mechanics cart is their bread and butter when it comes to this, and they've got it in every single color you can imagine. But this stuff goes all the way from, from just basic uh, entry-level carts, you know, the, the literally basic as it gets, all the way up to some really big cabinets. You know, full was a 72-inch uh, double bank cabinets or triple bank cabinets, and they got the new top cabinet that goes with it as well. These are fantastic cabinets, not just for the home DIYer, but even for some low entry level pro, uh, professional grade stuff. But if you want to talk their professional grade solution, that of course is Icon. We've talked about Icon. We've had the Icon cabinet in the shop and whatnot. These things are top notch, and you know the the prices reflect that. 
Uh, but you know, when they go on sale, they're not half bad. They're still pretty expensive. And I'll be honest. I think most people, I would say 99% of people don't need them. All right. Uh, at least for the people who shop at typically at Harbor Freight, which is your home gamer, your prosumer types, even your, your entry level professionals, they can get by just fine with a U.S. general. And if you need to upgrade to that down the road, when you got the money, do that. Uh, I know there's all this credit. You can get credit off the truck from Snap on everybody else. Harbor Freight now has credit. I'm, I'm, you know, that's not the kind of, that's not what we call like good credit. Buying your house, good credit. You know, charging a pizza on your MasterCard, bad credit. All right. This is iffy kind of credit. You can justify it however you want. You can say, well, I use this to make me money. No, you don't. This holds your tools, dude. All right. <laughs> that's, it's a box that holds your tools. All right. You, if you treat it right and you don't thrash them, the, even a Yukon will last you a good long time. All right. I've seen people using cobalt boxes in the shop. All right. Jack stands. This is another big, uh, big winner here for Harbor Freight. The entry level, almost nobody even thinks about these things. They're the Hallmaster Scissor Jacks. We step up from there to the Pittsburgh. Now, this was the old tried and true. Used to be gray. Now it's red. We got the three tons. Uh, and one, they just finally came out with the two ton. But we got the low profile. We got the standard. We have the two ton. And we got some bottle jacks here. And, you know, I sound like I'm kind of blowing that off. But if you think about this, look at that. 30 tons. That, that's a lot of weight to move there. So you can lift some big items with a bottle jack. All right. Then, of course, we get to the middle, middle of the road. I know, right? So it's it's good, better, betterest, and best, I know. And then we got, this is the Pittsburgh Automotive. All right. So not Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Automotive. It's different. <laughs> Don't ask me why. This is where we start to see like the aluminum racing jacks. And of course, I always wonder who, what idiots are out there racing their jacks. But if you did, of course, you want the lightweight aluminum for that extra speed. Uh, and then we got some other stuff. Hydraulic floor jack here, 22 ton. We got a, a basic trolley jack and some other, you know, equipment in here. Some more uh, uh, bottle jacks, air hydraulic bottle jack. If you don't want to do the work, you can just hook it up to your air compressor uh, and some other stuff. But then, of course, the top line one is going to fall to the Daytona. And, of course, we've even seen a whole lot more of the Daytona stuff. You know, I'm a huge, huge fan of their new long reach, ultra low profile one. Uh, I love that thing. It works great on, on about anything. We've used it on an MG midget and we've used it on a half ton pickup truck and everything in between. And it works just fine. And of course they're coming out with more colors and stuff in the standard Daytona like this one. It was just yellow. Now we're going to see this in red and probably other colors after that. All right. Outdoor power equipment. This is going to get again, confusing. Portland is your entry level. But Portland, all the Portland stuff is corded, all right? No cordless stuff in the Portland. Okay, I take it back. The Japanese-style double-edged saw and the miter box are cordless, technically, all right? But if you want cordless, you got to step up to the Bauer. So Bauer, again, is back here in the Goldilocks zone, all right? This is your 20-volt Hypermax, uh, and uh, you've got the, the, the little edgers and stuff. You've got blowers, you've got pressure washers, you've got heaters, chainsaws, uh, pole saws, and more about everything. The only thing you don't really have here is you don't have a lawnmower, you don't have a snowblower. All right. Now, they had this, used to be their top of the line, would now fall in the middle of the road, but actually it's gone extinct. As you can see, it says clearance on all this. I, I think at this point we gotta we got to call it. Lynx is dead, man. They, I, I, this is a bad call by them. I, I think that they should have done something to appease the, the poor people who bought into links. You know, uh, a, lot, a lot of people are going to say, well, you see, this is a sign Harbor Freight won't stand behind their products. Dude, DeWalt did this first, exactly the same thing with their 40, 40 volt line. They came out with a whole 40 volt line ex ex expressly for professional landscapers and then screwed them over by getting rid of it and telling them they had to go to the flex vault system. So th this is just par for the course for the industry. Sad to see them do it. Wish they would have could have come up with a, a more inventive way to get around it. But fact of the matter is, look up Lathelli. It's the same thing, essentially. Their batteries should fit in most cases. And if not, a little sandpaper on the edges will get them down to size. It's just the case is slightly larger on some of them. Uh, but they're middle of the road now 
is the Atlas 40 volt system. And this is, they have these uh, dual batteries that will run 40 or 80 volt on some of them. Some of them are 40 volt only. So you gotta be aware when you're buying, what you're buying. Because of course the top of the line is the Atlas 80 volt. And here we actually see lawnmowers, okay? So we got the two lawnmowers there. Now, is there lawnmowers in the 40 volt line? I don't believe so. I, maybe there is. I'm, I'm not seeing it, but maybe there is. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, this is the replacement now for the 40 volt. And of course, then the, the big daddy is the 80 volt. And I get, I, I, let me just say this, I don't have any of these. I've not tested any of them personally, but I've gotten lots of feedback, even on the mowers. Everyone who has these loves them, says they're fantastic. All right, now, welders. Talk about a big item for Harbor Freight. So the Chicago Electric, for way back in the day, was the cheap entry-level welder that everyone went with when they wanted to just try out some welding or they needed to just tack a few things together, and that's what they picked up. And they're all right for that, I guess. Uh, and then the middle of the road, the Goldilocks now is titanium. And I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of the titanium line. I think it provides a lot of bang for the buck. It really does. When it's on sale, uh, ignore that price right there. That's obviously a glitch, but they have some, some well-priced items and they do a great job on it. They even offer a spool gun add on here for some of their multi-process welders and such. And then of course the big daddy is the Vulcan and the Vulcan's been, you know, there are a lot of questions about it when they came out, but pretty much if, if you don't know, uh, you haven't been following anything going on with YouTube, this the Vulcan has proved itself. There's a lot of pros out there who now use the Vulcan. Now, again, people are like, I don't believe that. I'd never see that in a pro shop. There's multiple levels of professionals, all right? There's guys working in industrial fab fabrication shops who run their welder pretty much all day long. That's a different kind of set as the person who's going to use this for, you know, it's not the main tool in their shop, all right? but they do do welding in their shop and they are professionals and a lot of them are choosing these tools. They're fantastic welders. Now, we're going to talk about some electrical stuff. Centec, if you heard the bear, Centec's their entry level electrical automotive kind of stuff and it's not been great. Now, I've not had a chance to check out their new, some of the new stuff they've come out with, I'll be honest. Uh, but I have tried some of the older stuff and I, I thought it to be pretty much terrible for the most part. Uh, I will say the stuff that I've used, I actually looks like is now gone. Uh, I'm not seeing any of the items that I actually used. This is even different than the one that I used back in the day. And uh, who knows, maybe the new Centec is better than the old stuff, but I was not impressed with it. Now, here's where it gets a little confusing. So for multimeters, they've gone over to Ames. So that, that's their new brand. And and the Ames multimeters are, are fantastic, all right? I've got one. I use it every day. I used it last night. And, you know, I love using that thing. It, it is really nice to use. But for the other automotive electric stuff, the charging and whatnot is Viking. And we've got here, quiet moto. We've got some of the new Viking stuff, including the Viking heavy-duty jumper cables here. And from all accounts, I've heard the Viking stuff is fantastic. Now, I did uh, I did buy this Viking charger right here, and I did have a problem with it. And the problem was that I did something stupid. I loaned it to a friend of mine, and I haven't gotten it back. So uh, that was uh, some time ago, and if I ever find them and I get it back, I'll let you know how it did, or maybe they'll tell us. And the one thing, if you're really looking for something high-end, something premium, you got to go to our merch store. <laughs> I know, shameless self-promotion there. Anyway, check out the merch store. Take a look at it. You know, it's still kind of wintertime. We've got lots of warm stuff out there and some light-duty kind of stuff for uh, when it gets warmer, hopefully soon, right? Anyway, that's all the bear has for you today. If you got any questions or comments about this, based something you think the bear missed or questions about something I didn't cover, comment down below. I'll try and take a look at it. Anyway, don't forget to chomp the old like button there. Ring the bell, subscribe, you know, all that good YouTube kind of stuff. Till next time, you take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.